Welcome to the 2018 Crocodile Trophy, the 24th edition of a race that's been described as the most legendary mountain bike stage race on earth. I love the training, I love the feeling, and I, and I just enjoy being part of the croc. It's like a fairy tale, like um, something that you can dream and you can live. Australia is amazing everything that I dreamed of and more. We start our journey in the holiday paradise of Cairns and I'm joined by nine-time Crocodile Trophy finisher Martin Wisata to tell you about this year's eight days of racing. Thank you Tomo. The lead up to the race in Cairns is always a great way to meet the Crocodile Trophy family. This is, wow, <laughs> this is uh, our first day here and it's a very good beginning <laughs> of our journey. As is always the case, the adventure starts with the rider briefing, where the organizers share information about the stages and crucial race details. It's called the Crocodile Trophy for a reason, and all the international visitors look forward to meet a real-life croc there. This gorgeous girl is Sugar, one of our beautiful estuarine crocodiles. So she's approximately five years old, yeah. which is pretty much still a juvenile for an estuarine crocodile, but they're the world's largest species of crocodile and the world's largest reptile, which is pretty cool, really. The good news is there are no crocs on the course, but the race is supported, as always, by Tourism Queensland. I came back the other day from uh, Indonesia and I saw people on bikes coming over for this event from all over the world, so 16 nations represented, so it's an absolute pleasure. It's time to get your number plate and the moment you put it on the front of your bike, it makes all the racing very, very real. Well, I did it last year. Um, it was hot and steep. Um, so this year I'm a little bit more prepared. Um, so we'll just see how we go. Here's what's on the agenda for the 2018 Crocodile Trophy. It's a course that's been laid down over 700 kilometres in distance with 15,000 metres of climbing around the city of Cairns and the Atherton Tablelands. One, oh two, three. The founder of the Crocodile Trophy, Gerhard Schoenbacher, starts the race. And it's the calm before the storm. It was, uh, we roll through cans under police escort, and this is actually the neutral bit until the race starts officially a few kilometers up on the first hill. There are a lot of different reasons why people choose to race the croc every year. I have seen this race like many years ago when I was doing road cycling and I just I thought it always looked a really fantastic event and something that I always wanted to do and I live very close by and decided this year I might as well enter. <laughs> it has been on my bucket list, no kidding, for at least 10 years and I just keep thinking one day, one day, one day and I said last year, I said no more one days, I'm going next year so... Many internationals are here, and this is day one. The biggest challenge is the humidity, racing through rainforests. Not only for overseas riders, but the very unusual terrain and the weather conditions makes it tough. And of course, there's the river crossings around the Atherton Tablelands. It's tough, but it does offer a welcome cool down for some of the riders. Yeah, keeping the body cool and the temperatures as low as possible is key to this race. And as you said, you can do that at river crossings and of course at the feed zones that come around about every 30 or so kilometers. So about, about one and a half to two hours on the bike before you head to those. On this day, it's Urs Huber and Connie Loza who do the breakaway. Get to the feed zone first. It's hot today, huh? <laughs> Sir Nissen is chasing those two very, very hard. Urs, he's here for the sixth time and he wants to chase his fifth Croc Trophy win. His uh, country mate, Connie Loza, is here for the first time. I got the first experience now today of the terrain, of the station, now also the heat, and uh, I think I feel uh, quite comfortable with that, and uh, I'm looking forward for the next uh, stages. At the women's race, it's Lucy Caldwell, an ex-road pro who lives in Queensland, is putting the hammer down on stage one. But the weather once again throws everything at the riders and at this race, and a huge storm is coming through. Depending on where you are on the course, it's actually a very welcoming cool down, or you absolutely get drenched. Unfortunately, the weather wasn't kind to us, and the tail end has got caught in some um, storms uh, with lightning. 
and uh, the lightning was um, hitting the ground very close to the riders, so it meant that some of them uh, were stopped f from racing for safety reasons. Um, but everyone else was very happy and all the races that uh, were stopped for safety will still continue tomorrow with adjusted times. The first night is spent on the shores of the beautiful Lake Tinaru. Most riders and the crew sleep in tents, but there are also hotel packages if you like. The reward for a stage win is a boomerang. And for most of the Europeans and the internationals, it's a welcome trophy. Stage two, it showed yet again that this race is for the all-round mountain biker. You need to be able to climb fast, descend fast, and ride fast in a group. And uh, yeah, what was very special here was uh, you start in the rainforest, it's a nice climb around Mount Edith, and as soon as you crest over the top there, the terrain completely changes. It feels like it's 10 degrees hotter and a lot, lot more humid before you go back over the hill again and back into the rainforest. The field of almost 100 riders consists of professionals as well as amateurs. Martin, how do you prepare for a gruelling event like the Crocodile Trophy? Well, it's definitely a race you can't do off the couch. So you need to prepare for it. You need to get your hours on the bike in. You need to ride as many k's as you can. But then again, don't get too crazy about the training programs. If you spend time on a bike, if you enjoy it, that's the most important bit. Here's a German rider, Stefan Schmeckenbecker who's making his debut appearance. He was selected by the bike magazine. The Croc is his second ever mountain bike race and he prepared for it for the entire year. He was a great competitor. We rode together quite a bit during this race and it's this special bond you make with fellow riders. It's very special at this race. He says, the nice thing is, as rough and painful as it is on the track, once you reach the finish line and the happy hormones are kicking in and the joy, then somehow straight away everything is good again. And that's what I'm feeling right now. But now everybody has settled into a nice rhythm. Start the morning, get ready for the race, ride your bike for four, five, six hours, go back, eat, drink, wash your bike and get ready to do it all over again. And even as an amateur, you start to feel like a racing pro because your whole day is only about the race. And these are some of the parts of Outback Queensland that the riders get to see. It's an amazing part of Australia, including the first time visit to the town of Herberton as we check the results after the second stage. And Connie Lawza is in front with a time of nine hours, 19 minutes and 22 seconds. Two seconds behind is Urs Huber. Stage three, and once again, that Crocodile Trophy doesn't fail to deliver excitement. An unexploded military ordnance has been found and the track needs to be rerouted slightly. Unfortunately, we found an unexploded device that's been there from World War II and the army are currently attending and whilst there's no real risk to the public, um, no one can go past it at, at, this, at this point in time. And so the race start is delayed, but the riders are accompanied on a detour by the police through town to re-enter the race course safely in the Herberton Range National Park. In the peloton, there was a lot of talk about stage three. It was on the profile on paper, one of the hardest stages of the Crocodile Trophy in its existence. It's so steep in places that even the top guys need to push their bikes up and either walk or run there. The stage is hard on the mind, hard on the bike, hard on the body. It's the ninth time that I rode this race. I absolutely love it. Some say the dumbest for coming back so often. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I obviously love this race. I love uh, what it does to you. Speaking of heaviest, I got lighter and lighter every year throughout the nine so if you put me on the scale of the beginning of each stage of the last nine years you'd have probably seen one kilo drop every every year um, it went from pure survival the first years for me personally just to make it to the finish line somehow to actually now I'm I'm racing well Martin you've been promoting the crocodile trophy for many years it has attracted many Europeans over the years but the Australian connection is certainly coming through including the Coppo brothers from Queensland the climbing can be very tough when the surface is loose and rocky. Um, it can be, it's, it's a lot trickier than climbing on like a, a smooth uh, soil or something like that. So that is, it takes a bit of extra skill to get up those climbs and it's hard on the legs. It certainly is hard on the legs, even for the locals with some home advantage. The croc is a huge challenge. Could always be better, but 
yeah, we're amateurs, so can only expect so much. And even with the shorter distance, this was one very tough stage. But the rewards are there for all to see. And there are smiles on people's faces when they cross the finish line. Just enjoyed myself all the way through to the finish and everyone had been talking up how hard today was going to be. I couldn't believe it. I just had so much fun. So hopefully there's more of this to come. Day three is in the bag. Next up is the individual time trial. Relatively short, 38 kilometers, about a thousand meters of elevation. And we start in reverse order of the general classification, meaning the slowest riders start first and the fastest in GC are the last ones to the start line. Time trialing was actually what I used to enjoy, um, but I don't know if this is really a typical time trial, but <laughs> it will be yeah, interesting. Well, time trials can be very tactical, the stages, but for Soren Nissen, it's all about damage control because of a wrong turn from the day before. I lost a lot of time due to the penalty yesterday in the overall, so uh, now I will just fight to stay in my, my, my third spot on the podium, and I think uh, that's my goal for the rest of the race. At the front, it's all about those crucial seconds. It can be lost and found everywhere. Conny Loza, he's an extremely strong rider on the climbs, so he needs to put the power down there. Urs Huber on the flats, you're not going to drop him. No chance. And you know, the shorter the stage, the more it hurts. And you can see how everyone is pushing hard, trying to find seconds everywhere. And when you do that, you need to calculate your risks very closely. How far are you willing to push? When are you uh, willing to go to the line? Sometimes that line is very, very short and you go over it, unfortunately. And when an accident happens, the injured rider becomes the number one priority for the entire organization. It's a huge challenge in the sometimes so remote locations. The medical support team makes sure that the local emergency crews are notified quickly via satellite communication and that the rider is looked after well. As we check the results after stage four at Urs Huber, climbs to the top of the general classification with a lead of one minute and 10 seconds. Sarah White dominates the elite women's category. As for the men, Urs Huber will go into defense mode. Now I just can uh, look what uh, Kony makes and uh, have to defend, not have to attack or yeah, just, uh, just look at him and uh, uh, defend the, the time that I have now. Let's begin in the show. The Crocodile Trophy visits Urban Bank for the 16th time. It's a small mining township in the outback and you can get a real sense of adventure out here with very limited phone reception. There's not much out here really apart from a pub, some good friends and some good stories. Lottie de Vette from Belgium says she really loves adventures. She's used to camping and yes, this is an adventure. We are in the outback now. We're racing typical croc trophy territory. Fast roads, lots of corrugations. They shake you to bits at times and make you wonder why you chose this race. But on other times, you're sitting in a nice bunch, cruising along, and uh, it's a really cheerful atmosphere. Not only solo riders uh, compete in the race, but also teams. They're riding together the entire time, and those two boys from Belgium, they're very powerful and ambitious. Stefan Vass says, in the beginning I didn't sleep well, however, after a few days now we're used to it. We've recovered well. The legs are good today and I feel strong. We'll try to challenge our direct competitors in the adventure category and take the leader jerseys off them. We're about 20 minutes behind, so this is an ambitious mission, but we'll try or we'll die. Trying or dying, eh? <laughs> The two Belgian riders are getting very close in today's very hot stage to Skybury. However, the two New Zealanders will keep the team lead. Sarah White, nothing seems to be too hard for her. Very good technical rider. Smiles when she's riding her bike. But on a day like today that has a lot of fast, flat road sections, it's Shoki who takes a very special win. The first 10k I was in front. And the other girls just missed the boat, so I was like, well. <laughs> and then I started thinking, maybe this could be possible. And then I got to the beverage zone, and Tom was there, <laughs> my husband. <laughs> so we took it together. The race has a lot of European sponsors. 
One of them is for the best Austrian leader jersey. It's very hotly contested. Last year, I was proud enough to wear it for two days in a row. And this year, it's Matthias Grick who takes it from start to finish. Matthias Grick wins the stage and he is happy. He says a stage win at the Crocodile Trophy. That's something to put on my CV. The Crocodile Trophy arrives at the Skybury Coffee Plantation. It's a beautiful part of the world. It's nestled in the heart of Australia's coffee-growing region in Mariba. It's become one of the top visitor attractions in the region and founded by the McLaughlin family. A nice coffee can't be beaten. As far as we're concerned, mountain bike riders really, really appreciate world-class coffee. And, and, you know, we've really, really enjoyed supporting the Croc Trophy over the years now. It's a fantastic venue to, to host the riders. Uh, the riders love it. Um, and it just allows us to, to showcase um, what we do on the farm and, more importantly, the tropical North Queensland region as well. Skybury Coffee, great sponsors of the Crocodile Trophy as we enter Stage 6. Skybury to Skybury, 125 kilometers, the longest stage of this year's race. The peloton breaks up quickly, and it's also the first day for the three-day croc adventure races. And in this year's race is a father-daughter team from Italy. Giovanni Colagiacomi says this is definitely a special moment. I taught her how to ride a mountain bike, and I think these last three stages will have to be the most beautiful ones. As for Silvia, she says we always ride and train together, always with him, of course. I couldn't do it without him. He helps me. He teaches me the techniques, and I always ride with him. We are racing each other pretty hard at this race. Once you get to the feet zone, there's a truce amongst the riders. We look out for each other, and we generally leave together when we arrive together. Back on the track, you need to be self-sufficient. You've got to bring spares, food and water, and there's always stories to tell. A kangaroo took uh, Uche's back wheel and he crashed. I was just behind him and I, I felt, uh, yeah, it was uber uber. I was also, uh, I was just in, in his wheel. I, I, I felt also a little bit, but not too hard. Luckily for Urs, also not so hard. It was coming from the side, jumping into the road and uh, I saw it, but it was already too late. I had no chance. And then after uh, 80k, there were four riders who were just behind them, and I got a flat tire. And then in the, in the last, yeah, the last 50k, I got another two flat tires, and I was really disappointed. Mechanical problems are common at the Crocodile Trophy. You've got to be blessed with luck if you want to win this grueling race. The top four riders are racing towards the finish at Skybury. Huber and Losa ride a tactical race. As we check the overall results after stage six, and Urs Huber and Losser, the two Swiss riders, are on top. They dominate the general classification. Just one minute and 10 seconds separates them. As we go into stage seven, Martin, it's the race to Weatherby from Skybury. Another very interesting one, because the main bunch stayed together until about kilometer 35. It was a very, very fast race. First feed zone was reached in less than an hour, so hardly anyone decided to stop, which ended to be a fatal mistake on a long, hot day, especially in the single trail before we reached feed zone two. Mona Van Nassau says, yesterday I struggled a lot on the single trails. I was really beaten up. I just couldn't go on anymore. However, my husband helped me and then I could do it. After the single trails, I drank a lot at the feed station and had some sugar, sat down for 10 minutes, and then I was able to continue. She says, indeed, it's much harder than I expected. You shouldn't underestimate it. The leading woman, Sarah White, seems to excel in such dreadful conditions. She's a former ultra-endurance runner and increases her lead ahead of the road experts to almost half an hour at Weatherby. Loza and Huber, they do arrive together in their one minute and ten gap as everyone looks forward to a thrilling finale down to Port Douglas. And with only 62 kilometres to go, everyone is enjoying the last evening together at the Crocodile Trophy. The sun in your eye, the heat is in your head. You know, we have to all look after ourselves in the world and this is part of it. This is all 
or part of that deal. And uh, there's so many good people coming here just to have fun and uh, just to uh, rekindle our friendships from uh, previous years. That's why I love coming here. It's more of a group sport than soccer. I mean, we all stick together. We, we, we can we can socialize with the pros. We can socialize with people who come in last. It's just it's just fantastic. Yeah. And, that's his club with the spirit. and that's the spirit that uh, the Crocodile Trophy represents, according to owner and founder Gerhard Schoenbacher, who is also responsible for forming the inaugural Middle East Tour in 2019 to bring people together from all over the world. And you can see that it works. It's killing. Weatherby Station is one of the oldest cattle farms in Australia. It was founded in 1878. It has been a huge refuge for travellers between Port Douglas and the gold fields inland along the bump track. What makes it so special to be living in the outback and to be a farmer? I think um, the way of life, uh, no pressure. Uh, only the pressure you make on yourself and the pressure of the rainfall when it doesn't rain and bushfires but you learn to live with those things and uh, on the upside the wallabies the kangaroos so um, I think probably the benefit of living a, a, a lifestyle where you um, are with nature living with nature there's one person Pete McNally who enjoys this race at a very moderate pace it's somebody you want to see after you have arrived, definitely not during the race, because he's the driver of the sag wagon, the last vehicle, in charge of cleaning up riders in the truck. You meet a lot of people from all parts of the world in, uh, in this bike race. You can be sitting down having breakfast with someone that may have won stages of Tour de France. I mean, where else can you get that? Dinner is ready. And the riders are well fed. There are chefs that join the race and follow the tour from start to finish. And look at the food. Absolutely brilliant. It's a feast for a king and a queen. We are fed extremely well at the Crocodile Trophy. There's a lot of food you need to eat when you burn so many calories. It was a nice relaxing evening, but on the other hand, it's also a bit nerve-wracking. A lot of us went to bed nervous, knowing how little time there was between us and our competitors chasing or being chased. And so to the final stage of the 2018 Crocodile Trophy. It's the race to Port Douglas. The slower riders get a head start. Amongst them are the three-day croc races. It was good. Yeah, yeah, it's been really good, actually. Um, I don't think I could have done the eight days. It's very, very difficult. Um, a bit more training was probably needed. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's really enjoyable. I've learned so much and I'm going to try to, I'm going to hope to come back next year with a proper bike, bring some friends and see if I can make a really good uh, go of the, uh, the event. The final stage and the riders will race from Weatherby to Port Douglas towards the coastline and through dense rainforest. One of the highlights of the stage plans awaits. It's the notorious bump track. It is one of the more hectic parts of this entire race. You lose a lot of elevation in a very, very short time. There's a lot of water bars who have the potential to catch you out, so you have to be 100% focused. And to be honest, people told me there's viewing platforms out there and it's really pretty. I haven't seen it. I got tunnel vision in there. I'm fully concentrated because you are chasing the last few seconds. And this year, the timing finish was at the bottom of the bump track. And for the first time, we had a mass arrival on Four Mile Beach. There was a good reason for that. Among the race organising committee is Regina Stanger, and she says, Today we are racing in memory of Greg Parr, who was one of our team members, and we are so sad that he passed away earlier this year. This stage is in his memory, and we crossed the line for him. It was a very nice gesture to honour such a great man, and Greg's wife, Charmaine, she actually joined us on this wonderful arrival on Four Mile Beach in Port Douglas. It's an indescribable feeling riding together in the peloton towards the finish line. You see it from kilometers away and it sinks in the sense of achievement. Thank you to everyone. Yeah, it's um, pretty good to get down to the beach here, enjoy the nice sea breeze and um, see everyone happy, finished and everyone mainly in one piece. You start as competitors, you finish as one big croc trophy family. Be it an amateur or a pro, everybody has their goals, their dreams, and we're so relieved. 
I think uh, 10 years ago I never was dreaming about winning the Crocodile Trophy five times and now I, I did it. Uh, it's a dream that come true and a uh, big uh, thing to end the season like that. And so Urs Huber writes stage racing history with five Crocodile Trophy victories. One minute was the time difference to second place Swiss Connie Losser, with Sora Nissen in third. As for the women, Sarah White comes out on top ahead of Lucy Coldwell, the top two Aussies dominating the women's category. The winners and finishers celebrate on Four Mile Beach and receive the coveted Crocodile Trophy as their reward. It's perhaps one of the most unique trophies in the world of mountain bike racing. All croc finishers will return home with an immense sense of achievement. Finishing a race like this is just an unbelievable feeling. You know, and today, you know, obviously had a special meaning because it obviously had, uh, you know, it was a memorial ride for a friend and fellow croc racer in Greg Parr. So to win my category and uh, fastest Australian today was uh, it's just, you know, cream on the top. Yeah! Make sure you join Martin Wisata for the 25th anniversary edition of the Crocodile Trophy in 2019. I'll see you at the start line.